Boy. Uh, actually, funny enough, you uh, you guys will probably laugh at this a little bit. We're going to see um, Jackal Saturday night. Oh, um, so that'll be a uh, that Holly had never really heard of Jackal. Uh, I said, "Oh yeah, we're gonna go. You should listen to some of their songs." And then I came back later that day, and she said, "So they play a, a chainsaw in the song." I said, "Yeah, that's uh, that's their that's their claim to fame." So uh, mm-hmm. we'll be going to see that. Eric Jones back in the Freak Nation, driving for Legacy Motorsports, and uh, it's not often that you've got to work around a guy's schedule that reads to kids. Are you headed to go read to kids or are you just getting back to read to the kids with the Eric Jones foundation? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it, no reading today. We had some yesterday that we were doing and, um, got it knocked out. We, we have a couple interviews lined up today and uh, one in person coming up after, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's been good. We take kind of the winter, uh, the winter slows down a little bit for us, and then we kind of get fired back up here um, coming up in the season. So we got hopefully lots of good stuff planned for it. Well, how much in the off season are you reading to these kids? Because it's a big deal, man. We listen whether it's green eggs and ham or something a little bit more serious. Uh, you take that serious reading to these kids. Yeah, we do. Uh, well, I'd have to go back and actually count. Um, I think we did. I think we did three of the readings in the off season, uh, not in person. They were all on, on, um, on Facebook. Um, but we do, you know, we do probably five to five to seven, I would say in person through the year, whether it's at the track or, um, you know, going to a school that's local to here in Charlotte. I've done some in Michigan too. And I've been back home in the summer during the, uh, the races that we run up there. So, you know, it's been, uh, it's been fun. It's, uh, it's something we've done now for really, um, I guess about four years. And so it uh, doesn't seem like it's been that long, but it's been fun to kind of see it grow and catch on and have people bring it up and ask you about it. And um, just hear that, you know, it, it has got some kids wanting to read a little bit more and asking their parents to, uh, you know, to read to them at night. So that's, uh, that's been pretty cool to hear. All right. We talked a little bit about music. What is Eric Jones music taste? You said your wife potentially usher fan, but what is your music taste? What gets you going? Daytona 500. What's your pre-race playlist? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I like a lot of different kind of music. Um, you know, grew up with classic rock. My dad was a huge classic rock fan, and you know, working in the garage with him all the time, we had um, everything going from Eagles, Led Zeppelin, AC/DC, um, Little Guns and Roses, uh, Black Crows. We were kind of all over the map on some rock, and. Um, I guess more recently, I've been more of a um, country music fan. I, I like all that, too. So, uh, pre-race, so Daytona 500, I'd probably go more uh, more classic rock. That, w- that would get me going. I, oh boy. Uh, actually, funny enough, you, uh, you guys will probably laugh at this a little bit. We're going to see um, Jackal Saturday night. Oh! Um, so, that'll be a... That'll, Holly had never really heard of Jackal. Uh, I say, oh yeah, we're going to go. You should listen to some of their songs. And then I came back later that day and she said, so they play a, a chainsaw in the song. I said, yeah, that's, uh, that's their, that's their claim to fame. So we'll, mm-hmm. uh, we'll be going to see that. Jesse James Dupree and Jackal. Listen, bro, you have to get pictures out of you and your beautiful wife at Jackal. That's the last concert I'd, I'd picture you two going to buddy. Yeah, it's uh, it's probably a little different than most concerts we'd go to. I had a good friend uh, wanted to go, and uh, I said, yeah, we'll go. I knew a couple of songs, but I'll, I'll make sure we post a couple of pictures from Saturday. <laughs> good. Let me drop something here on you. have heard of the driver, Tom Christensen, who's won so many Le Mans races, races for Audi. He's a huge headbanger, knows all about uh uh hard rock music, and uh, you might uh, find something in common with him. Uh, if you look him up a little bit, he, in fact, he and Kenny had a little uh, give and take. And I think uh, Christensen might have gotten the best of the deal and mm-hmm. dropped the mic and walked out of the studio. Yeah, I think it was in relationship to ACDC. I'm a pretty good aficionado when it comes to ACDC, Eric, but he had me on that one, which is very rare, Statman would admit. <laughs> so let's go back to the reading thing. 
do the kids that you read with, do they see you as a race driver or do they really connect with the reading that you're doing with them? I think first it's the racing for sure, right? They, they know that, um, that I drive and they're, they're excited about that. But I think once, um, you know, we get reading, they, they get pretty into it. So if we do them in person, we, uh, we make sure all the kids get books. So when I'm up there reading, they can follow along and, you know, check out every part of the book and be a part of it all. And that's always fun to see, you know, them getting interested in the book and laughing and asking questions about the book. And then, um, you know, at the end of it, we'll do a Q and a, and, uh, I'll be honest, there's usually not many questions about the book after, uh, it's mostly questions about, uh, about racing, but the kids always have the best questions. You know, they, um, when, when you're with a group of, of adults, it's, you know, usually you can, you can predict pretty well what the questions are going to be. Adults have most of the same questions for us. And then, um, the kids, they just go off the rails. They, they, you know, they want to know the random stuff that you would never even think about, you know, how many times you've crashed. Um, are you scared to crash? You know, do you pee in the car? Um, you know, all kinds of just random questions. And so it's always fun when we get to that part. Well, do you? Do I pee in the car? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do not personally. I I know of um, some drivers that, that have and do. I don't know currently, but I, I know I've known and heard of some stories in the past. Okay. Going to stick with reading, but going to switch it up a little bit. How much of the Toyota owner's manual are you done reading by now? <laughs> yeah, I dove into it. Um, you know, we, 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 did you really, did you really <laughs> do an owner's manual? Are you just saying that? <laughs> Come on, dude. Nobody reads the owner's manual. You'd be a dangerous man if you're going to sit here and try to sell us. Yeah, I read the owner's manual. Oh, the, but the race cars don't have owner's manuals. It's tongue in cheek. <laughs> but you're ready to go with your Toyota. No, I, yeah, no, I, uh, I I did not do the actual uh, owner's <laughs> manual. But um, yeah, you know, we've been getting getting kind of dialed in over at the shop, getting to know all the Toyota folks, and and getting going on that side of things. Uh, you know, I was with Toyota for a handful of years, and. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, work with them on the racing side up until really four years ago. So, yeah, cool to be back with them. A lot of familiar faces and familiar places and excited to uh, just get working with them again. It'll be a fun year to, to get on track and, uh, you know, see how much we can grow. You had some great success with them, including a win at Daytona. So is there any sort of that vibe that's kind of coming back to you? I know things are so different, but there's there's just something about a chemistry that sometimes when you get it back again, even if it's just minuscule, woo, where the momentum can go from there. Yeah, I, I think so. You know, everybody at the shop, super excited, right? I think we've obviously made a move to them intentionally, and, and that's to, you know, improve our performance. and so. You know, we've doubled our workforce really at the shop. Um, you know, we have a lot more people in a lot of different departments. We've had to become a bit more independent in some areas. We don't have a team alliance anymore with a, a different race team, only with the manufacturer. So um, me, myself, I, I know obviously all the resources they have and what they can bring to the table. So that was exciting. And I was just looking forward to my guys getting to uh, to work with them and, and see their resources. And, you know, I, I was always very trusting in my group and knew that they could make the things happen that they needed to if they had the right tools and this is uh probably the first time that i you know in the 43 car feel like those guys are are going to get the right tools and uh equipment they need to go and, and succeed so that's pretty exciting you know i think for them too they're they're really looking forward to it so what is it what does it feel like the number 43 historic richard petty championships it's been on a Dodge. It's been on a Ford. It's been on a a, a GM, a Chevrolet, a, a forty three on a Toyota. Uh, you're a history guy. What's that like? Yeah, you know, I, obviously, it's been a lot of different manufacturers. But uh, at the end of the day, it's whatever you think you can do to go fast and, and run well. So, um, yeah, I was excited to make the move and get over there. And um, Richard is excited. You know, he's. Um, He's always been for performance and whatever we need to do uh, to go out and go fast. And so, um, 
talking to him. He's he's planning to come to a ton of races this year and be out there and be a part of it. So um yeah, excited. Just hopefully uh, you know, we can go out and run good for him and and get him uh into victory lane a few more times. Eric Jones driving the 43 again for 2024. This time branded with a big fat Toyota. Uh good to get you in here, Eric. Looking forward to the 2024 season. Jimmy Johnson, certainly one of our favorites, if not uh Statman's favorite. Uh NASCAR pilot over the last 10, 20 years. And again, Statman, I'm speaking for you, but uh, Richard, it was Richard Petty is the greatest to Statman, and then <laughs> Jimmy Johnson with a close set. So you're basically saying this is his favorite team ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, buddy. Good luck at the 500. We'll see you then, man. All right. We'll see you guys. Thank you. At Lucas Oil, we take pride in creating problem-solving products to make your car care easier. We protect your vehicle and make it run longer so you can focus on the things that matter most. Lucas Oil, it works. General Tire delivers. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAV TV. Monday is All American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt, MAV TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All American Racing only on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. Let's go! Yeah! For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. It all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year.